All right, so in this uh, video, we're gonna look at state and non-state functions, and what are some examples of state and non-state functions we're gonna look at in thermodynamics. So first, let's go ahead and look at both of these. What do we mean by a state function, and what do we mean by a non-state function? So a state function is something or property that we can define with the current state of a system. So we're able to look at it and we're able to see, oh, it's just, that's what, what is the property of that. So something like we can measure the temperature of a substance, we can measure the volume, we can measure the pressure, we can measure uh, the mass. These are state functions, properties of uh, substances or gases or liquids, whatever we want to look at, that are we can actually measure or quantify just by looking at that substance. We don't have to make it go under a change, okay? Now, a non stuck function is only defined when a change occurs, okay? So it's gotta go along some path or change. So maybe let's go ahead and look at a couple examples of this, okay? So we would have, as an example of a state function, that we mentioned, temperature. Okay, so temperature is a state function. We can define this simply by looking at uh, a substance. Now, a non-state function would be heat. Okay, so what happens to a, a substance as it changes temperature? Okay, so let's look at maybe an example you would see at home. So maybe you have a coffee pot here, and in our coffee pot, we put some hot tea or hot coffee. Okay, now just being at home, right, you know that it's at some temperature, right? So we could, if we want to, put a thermometer in here and we'd see maybe it tells us it's 95 degrees Celsius. Okay, it's a little bit below boiling. Now that's right when we put it into our coffee mug, okay? Now over time, we'll notice that that temperature is gonna drop, it's gonna decrease. Well, <clears throat> that's something we can measure at each step of the way. That's a change in our state function. We go from 95 degrees Celsius, we measure it again, it's 90 degrees Celsius. We measure it again, it's 80 degrees Celsius. It's changing in temperature. That's our state function. We can measure it at each point, not thinking about the change. It doesn't matter how it got to 80 degrees Celsius, it's 80 degrees Celsius. Now, why is it changing temperature? Well, just from experience, we know that our coffee pot, our, uh, our coffee mug here, excuse me, uh, feels hot. It's giving off heat, it's giving off energy, okay? So that, that kind of movement out, right, we can think about as being, we can define heat as Q. Heat getting radiated off, okay? Well, if we're gonna measure the heat that's radiated off, that's dependent upon the quantity of it, how much our temperature has changed. Okay, so that's why we would say heat is a non-state function. It depends on what we started with and what we ended up as. It doesn't, it's not necessarily like temperature, where temperature we could say, temperature, it's at 95 degrees Celsius. It doesn't matter if it started at 110 and dropped down to 95. It doesn't matter if it started at 50 and ended up at 95. It's at 95 degrees Celsius, okay? And so what we would see here is that heat is dependent upon our change in temperature. Okay, right, because we defined heat as the transfer of kinetic energy, and temperature is a measurement of the average kinetic energy. So if our average kinetic energy changes, kinetic energy is gonna transfer, okay? And so we can say, well, how do these two relate to each other? What we can do is we can relate a non and a state function. Okay, so we can relate a non-state function with a state function. And we could see that, well, our non-state function, heat, we said is dependent upon, right, it's a transfer of kinetic energy, the change in kinetic energy of something else, right? So we could say it's equal to some multiplier times a change in temperature, right? Because our change in temperature is related to a change in average kinetic energy and that change in average kinetic energy relates to our transfer of that kinetic energy. 
okay? So if we're looking at how this changes, this is why we don't say it's a change in heat because heat is the transfer of this, right? We say it's the quantity heat is equal to, and I put this blank here, times the actual change in temperature. And that's because this blank is a proportionality constant that is dependent upon what's changing temperature. Because if this is an average, well, how much we have is gonna affect how much heat we get off, as well as uh, the physical property of a specific substance. So this proportionality constant here is gonna be different for uh, water. It's gonna be different for 100 grams of water versus 10 grams of water. It's gonna be different if you're comparing 100 grams of water and 100 grams of copper or 100 grams of our coffee mug, ceramic. So we see that there's a difference between these, right? But we do see that we can relate our state and non-state functions to each other because this is dealing with the path that our state function went on. So hopefully this clarifies this difference between state and non-state functions and how we're gonna use them uh, specifically in class.